senior engineering manager, managing Cold Fusion Server and Cold Fusion Builder and has worked on CF8, CF9 and first version of CF Builder. He possesses several years of R&D experience in application server internals and internet architectures and wrote world's first EJB 2.0 container when he was at Comedy Technologies. He was part of expert group committee for J2EE, EGB 2.0, EGB 3.0 specification. He has spoken at various conferences including Java 1, WebDU, RIACon, CF United, NCD DevCon and Adobe Max conferences. He is passionate about Cold Fusion and the role it plays in making hard things easy. He can be reached on Twitter at Kandir Okay, thanks. Uh... Uh, I hope you guys uh, had a great coffee tea break and uh, all set up uh, uh, for this next session. Uh, if if you're part of uh, previous two sessions, so uh, uh, just uh, you know, I think uh, those two sessions kind of lay uh, some of the foundations for uh, uh, this session. Uh, just a quick introduction about uh, myself. Uh, I'm not a security expert, so uh, some of the previous uh, talks were more about you know application security and other and other things, but. I'm actually on the other side, you know, how I am looking at my product, the product that I manage, and what is that I have done to improve the security. So, yeah, and I'm going to share uh, uh, those perspectives and uh, the practices that I have adopted uh, to make uh, security better for my product. It's, it's more uh, a practical approach, uh, an approach uh, uh, that right now I'm doing. So whatever I'm presenting is actually something that is uh, real in action. It's not like uh, there's no guarantee. I mean, it appears so. But it's, it's mostly about things in uh, uh, action right now. So uh, quick introduction about myself. I'm Senior Engineering Manager uh, uh, with Adobe, managing a couple of uh, 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 website, uh, web server related products. And uh, I, I was part of the expert group member committee for uh, JT 1.4 specification and EJB 2.0 and 2.1 and 3.0 specification. Um, all right, so uh, what I really want to cover is uh, why security is important. I will uh, briefly touch upon that and I'm going to touch upon this mostly uh, from a business perspective because uh, why, why I'm even making certain investment in security, right? Like why is security important and also why is security becoming an important at the organization uh, level as well. Uh, the, the, the next one is obviously if you know security is important, what is the desired level of security that you want in your product? Do you want to stay ahead? Do you want to uh, stay behind? And the third aspect is uh, what's your current grade? You know, where do you stand? Where your product or project that you are working on uh, really stand? How do you assess uh, uh, it, right? Whether it's a pass or a fail product, right? Simple Boolean. Uh, and, uh, once we talk about these key aspects, then we'll talk about uh, some of the processes uh, to make security in, in a product. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to go uh, very deep into some of the security algorithms and that kind of stuff, but more uh, related to actionable items that are applied uh, at a project level or a product level. So uh, security is important. Uh, we all understand, but uh, let us look at you know what are uh, some of the important uh, uh, factors uh, uh, or some of the risks, uh, risks that are associated if, you, if, if an organization don't pay attention to security. I think the most important is uh, brand. Uh, there's a severe brand risk. Uh, if you know uh, that Microsoft does not produce secure product, I mean, their business will just go for a top. It's, it's pure uh, brand perception. Regulatory, which is again very important. Uh, data pr uh, privacy is becoming very important. And uh, PCI, right? if, you're, uh, if you're using a product, uh, to create an e-commerce based website and if you are not following a PCI standard, you know, it's difficult, right? Uh, no one is going to give you a credit card information. Uh, and the third uh, most important factor that business looks at is revenue, right? I can lose enterprise customers. Adobe, uh, I mean, uh, in my case, Adobe can easily lose their big enterprise customers, like that is millions of uh, dollars in revenue. And uh, this uh, case actually happened with one of the product that I was uh, managing. Uh, so. Uh, we have a federal agency uh, in US government uh, and they found a security vulnerability. We were uh, poor in responding back and that was uh, an incident that happened two years ago. Even today, when the sales people go and approach that company, they actually give reference to that case and say, look at your security. And 
it's always a fighting case for us. Just a small incident that we could have handled much better, but every time we have to fight for the dollars uh, 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 with our customers, so it's very, very important. Uh, and uh, obviously, customers will find alternatives. And uh, just to give you a sense of uh, you know brand or uh, overall, every one of you will have some perception. Maybe you will have some data to back this up, but which browser is more secure? I'm not uh, trying to recommend uh, uh, any. Uh, I may not even have the right data, but we all have our own perception and sense of uh, you know which company is providing good security or uh, which product is uh, secure enough. So it, it really becomes very important. It plays in your mind uh, when you make a buying decision. Right, so uh, the next thing is, uh, uh, if security is important, uh, what's the, what, what is the desired level of security that you want in a product? Obviously, uh, if you look at uh, 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 incidents, uh, the response and other things, it's, it's mostly reactive, right? You're, you're behind, but you really want to be uh, ahead. And I've got this nice little graph uh, just to say, you know, uh, the magnitude uh, of uh, perception of security over uh, time, right? So the red, the red curve reflects, you know, what is the perception that people are uh, uh, forming about your project or your brand, you know, if you have a product uh, that is uh, over a longer period of time, you know. Their perception of the problems with security is growing by because the response is reactive, right? Because you respond, but the perception has increased beyond the response that you are providing. What you really want to be is here, right? That's a desired level of security that you want, where you are ahead in responding to the security problems that, that people are facing, right? And that's the only way to actually bring back or bring down the external perception of a problem. We are going to discuss a bunch of activities uh, 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 that we are applying in our project, how to actually bring this uh, down. And you have to have a constant uh, response mechanism to really uh, bring it down. And this is what I call more as a proactive approach, right? It's not just like if a CV is reported, you fix that and uh, be done with that, but it's more about, you know, what are the additional uh, effort that you are uh, doing uh, to bring down uh, or improve the security of your product, including perception. So uh, how do you assess, right? How do you assess security? How do, uh, I, I want to ask this question to people like, how do they currently assess security of a project that they are working on or security of product or what is the uh, mechanics that they follow? Anyone wants to go? Share his thoughts. By running VAPT. By running uh, 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 VAPT, like, yeah, it's a, right? So that's one mechanic, that's the right answer, you know? Uh, so you, you, yeah, yeah, right. Right, that is called uh, auditing. Anyone else? I mean, that definitely covers one dimension of how do you uh, uh, access compliance. compliance testing, right? So, uh, what I'm trying to uh, uh, drive uh, 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 drive the point is that there are uh, uh, various categories that you can define, and you need not restrict to the categories that I'm going to show, but define certain uh, categories so that you can actually grade the security of the project or the product that you are working on and you you can exactly uh, talk about this and let me show you uh, something um, i didn't want it to be quiz time but uh, anyway so so these are the four categories uh, and these are this is the input also coming from uh, adobe's uh, centralized product security team these are the four major uh, categories uh, that we look at uh, for our product uh, threat like I'm, I'm going to talk in detail about each of them. Uh, the first one is uh, threat landscape analysis. The second one is what is the level of application security. The third one is what is the mechanism of deployment and updates. You know how do you uh, uh, send out the patch. And the fourth most important and uh, uh, you know we as developers or hackers we actually tend to forget about that customer communication is very very important. Remember the curve that I showed earlier. It's the perception that matters a lot. And you need to, while you are improving the security of your product, you need to improve the perception about your product because that's when the branding and everything else comes into picture. It's not just sufficient to improve security. Even. So we're going to uh, look at all uh, these four aspects. So the first one is the threat landscape analysis. Uh, 
and that is really how do you account for uh, changing landscape with new and varied attack practice? You know, uh, they, they keep on changing. You know, like uh, there are always new form of attack uh, uh, that people are devising, that people, some of you uh, people like you are devising, and the companies uh, needs to respond. The product, the project, they need to respond to those uh, uh, attack practice and. Uh, threat landscape analysis is really about uh, uh, looking at those attack vectors, intelligence gathering, uh, and how do you process those issues? You know, this is mostly responsive, uh, reactive. You know, how do you uh, uh, respond to those issues? And also about training: is your staff sufficiently trained uh, uh, about the new attacks that are happening? Uh, application security is really about. What is your product design? You know, what are the APIs that are there? Are there uh, enough secure APIs? What is the status of uh, legacy uh, code? What is the testing methodology? And I think you were describing that. What is the testing methodology that you use? Security audit, you know, what kind of security audit is there? And what is the documentation, you know? If you have a secure flag in your product, is, is it sufficiently documented? Can people discover it? So it's, it's all about application security. And just to remind you, these are the classification. Uh, under which you can actually grade up, uh, uh, grade the security of your product, and I'll uh, show it to you also. The third one is uh, deployment and updates. So it's about process related to uh, secure installation and maintenance. Uh, if if you have built a patch, uh, how do you uh, how do you deliver it to your customers? You know, is there a regular patch mechanism uh, that exists? Sure. So on the previous slide, what is the legacy for? Right. So uh, legacy code, uh, for example, uh, uh, let's say uh, let's say you have a product uh, uh, from Adobe or let's say Flash Player or uh, Acrobat Adobe Reader, right? Now, right now the version of Adobe Reader is 10, right? So there must be so Adobe uh, Reader would have added some code for version 3, version 4, version 5, but they want the PDF created at those, those time uh, uh, to be still be viewable in the latest version. So there might be uh, some legacy code that is still around. And that legacy code, it's like, OK, it was there, it's working. No one is actively working on it. So we're never going to touch that. But you can have security holes uh, in the legacy code, isn't it? Right. So uh, uh, product companies typically face more issues around legacy code than uh, uh, tip, uh, projects because the duration, like a reader is, Acrobat is around for a very long time. Right? So there is a lot of code that was written in version 1 that actually still works. Today, so. Uh, so no, but no one is actually actively working on that. So there might be uh, something you need to do about that, and that's part of uh, application security. It's really more uh, internal uh, to how the product is uh, built. Uh, so uh, our deployment and updates. It's all about uh, installation and maintenance. Uh, how how do customers get uh, security patches? What is your zero day response policies? Do you ship regular patches? Uh, 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 some companies actually are very good in having it every Tuesday of a quarter, first Tuesday of a quarter, and the stuff like that. So that makes, if I'm a system administrator, I know, OK, uh, there is a patch coming out. So my perception of the security is definitely uh, better. And then are there enough configurations? Uh, if you have an UI uh, or administrator in, uh, interface, can you actually uh, set up uh, security settings? And then uh, customer uh, communication, uh, very, very important uh, uh, in my opinion. It's all related to outbound uh, communication on risk mitigation. You know, it's like, uh, for example, if you call uh, uh, customer support uh, uh, for, uh, uh, let's say, uh, you know, you have issue with your data telephone or I don't know, whichever phone you are uh, uh, using. And actually, if, if the, the guy on the other side tries to calm you down and help you explain the problem, even though he's offering no solution right now, but if he, you know, communicates well, what is the problem? What is the analysis of problem? What are the, you know, potential solution possible? And if he gives you a firm date, if he tells you, okay, we have listened to your problem, within two weeks you'll be able to fix your problem. You're going to be a happy customer compared to you call Airtel and say we don't know about this problem. Will when we release, we'll tell you. Obviously, there is a degree of difference between the two communication that has happened over here. It's the same problem with uh, security. There are many security uh, 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 vulnerabilities that you can't fix in a day, right? You can't fix in a uh, week's time, but uh, uh, providing the information, uh, communication back to customers is uh, very, very important about what you are doing. And that's why uh, uh, security bulletins are important. 
Uh, I don't know if you guys have uh, blogs, uh, and I'm not talking about uh, uh, talking about you know a, 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 a new uh, security uh, geekiness uh, that you have discovered in writing about blogs. That's totally separate, but more about outbound customer communication, about explaining an issue that they have faced, they have reported on, or talking more about a fix, or even telling them you know how the entire process is working. So it's it's more uh, uh, from that perspective. And the last point is uh, public relation, very important because you have to analyze whether the perception of security is decreasing. All your efforts are only useful if your customers know that the perception of security is decreasing. Right. So communication is very, very important. It is uh, often uh, not used. Maybe I come from the other side. I'm not uh, so much, you know, I'm not a security uh, uh, expert, but this is how I look at security. You know, what is the benefit that it is providing if I invest in it? Is it, is it going to uh, improve the perception of my product? So uh, these are the grades uh, that you can use uh, for each of the four categories that I uh, described. Uh, you know, threat, uh, threat landscape analysis, application security, deployment and updates. And you can actually grade the, uh, like a subject each one of those whether uh, you are an industry leader in that uh, uh, segment or if you are ahead of the curve uh, or you have adequate amount of security or you have some gaps preventing full adoption of industry best practices and F for failing and don't be shy you know uh, using these grades and uh, in a professional environment grading becomes you know grading does help you because it's like you're not uh, trying to say it depends. You know, if someone asks you like, uh, what is the status of uh, uh, application security, you're not saying like it depends. You're saying that uh, we are at grade D. Simple, like you have analyzed based on whatever uh, parameters, metrics you have used, and then you say that uh, I want to improve, right? If you're grade D, obviously you need to improve. Uh, C might be a little uh, adequate, but it depends on, uh, see I'm using it depends. Uh, so uh, uh, you need to determine uh, you know whether a grade C is adequate or whether it fits with the short term plan or your long term plans. Uh, any questions so far? So these are the uh, to uh, three things that I wanted to uh, describe uh, before we move into some of the processes that uh, we have followed uh, uh, to improve uh, uh, the security in uh, uh, one of the products that I'm uh, handling. So yeah, that's what identify section wise and overall grade for your project and product. It becomes very, very clear cut objective. There is no subjectivity. You can define more categories. You can say, I want to have six categories. Fair enough. So you define and then say, OK, this is my plan to improve. And that's, that's what it is, right? Once you have an objectivity saying that you know it's a grade D uh, product or it's a grade F product, uh, then obviously you need to have a plan to bake in security in your product right? because you want to improve uh, grades. Maybe you want to have short term target of grade B or C uh, and then you say long term target is grade A or something like that. And we have actually done that so uh, I cannot tell you the grades uh, but uh, this is exact same process that we have followed. I know the past grade of the project uh, 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 product that I am talking about and I know what is the desired uh, grade that I want to achieve. And that's how this process came into being. So it's, it's the same process that we followed that I'm describing. So uh, the question is how to secure good grades, right? How to make security in your product. And uh, we came up with uh, uh, plans at two levels, uh, organization level plan uh, and the team level plan. And organization level plan was really driven uh, more centrally because Products like Flash Player, Adobe uh, uh, Reader, and a bunch of other products are all, also Shockwave, and a bunch of other things were all already impacted. So there were more. There was more uh, uh, uniformity uh, in the plan that was followed at the organization level. So uh, at the organization level, uh, uh, there was a re. Uh, you know, there was a lot more focus that was given to a centralized security team. Uh, 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 I'm putting Adobe as an example because I know about it a lot more than uh, Microsoft's uh, centralized security team, for example. Uh, we call it Adobe Secure Software Engineering Team. Uh, it's a team of uh, privacy and security experts, real hardcore uh, security uh, uh, geeks. Some of them are from AdStake and uh, uh, a lot of uh, very credible uh, companies. 
So they do provide help on uh, best practices. Uh, they do provide help on incident uh, responses. Uh, and also, uh, they are very active in industry consortiums like uh, OVASP uh, and others that uh, you might be aware of. Uh, to me, of uh, all these things, uh, uh, the most important is the last piece, which is how do they interact with the product team, right? Like, what is my interaction with the centralized security team on improving the product? And that happens through SPLC, which is uh, a secure uh, product uh, life cycle. So this is uh, uh, how uh, we work out. So they help in uh, design, engineering, and uh, uh, validation uh, of the product. And uh, SPLC, uh, which is Secure Product Life Cycle, it is really about uh, uh, a set of uh, multiple uh, uh, steps uh, where uh, uh, the, uh, the, the central security team interacts with the development team uh, to really come up with a, uh, a plan and understanding of uh, how to deal with security uh, overall. So the first and most important uh, step is training and certification. And I'm going to discuss, uh, I'm going to uh, talk about what are the specific things that we did as a development team on training and certification. Very important uh, 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 step of an SPLC process. Uh, SPLC is Secure Product uh, Life Cycle. Uh, the next one was uh, planning. And we discussed a, a little bit about that uh, during grading. So it's nothing but. Uh, Essentially, grading your product. You know, uh, what is the grade that you want to uh, give uh, to your uh, product? Uh, the next one is uh, design. So it's about uh, the security architecture, uh, design review, and what's the application security. You know, what is what are the APIs and what is the product architecture and design? So there's an interesting story on uh, Seth Martin, and uh, few years ago. Uh, uh, our centralized security team, I was uh, going through uh, this process and they asked me like, okay, can you do a threat model uh, for uh, for the product? I said, what? Threat model? I mean, uh, sorry, but I heard that term for the first time uh, and I said like, what's a threat model? Like, uh, what am I going to do about threat model? And then, uh, 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 funnily, the guy who I was talking to, uh, he said like, can you draw circles and boxes? I said, I can do that. Uh, can you draw... Uh, a high level uh, view of the product on a blackboard or on a whiteboard. I said I can do that. So that's that's what threat model is uh, all about. And I'm going to show you the exact picture of uh, it looks like a molecular biology though. Uh, but this is the threat model that I do and and I realized that if you are uh, a senior technical member on the team, if you are a product architecture, it's, it's it's really just laying down the data flow diagram and the big boxes that contains you know some. Uh, logical connected piece of entity. You know, it's, it's it's no rocket science. And I mean, first time I I was threatened by the threat model, but uh, later on I realized like it's, it's it's not such a big deal uh, to do that. So this very very important. And once you have a threat model, it becomes very easy to keep on updating it, it and uh, uh, keep on uh, uh, adding it. So it's it's, it's you can see uh, one of the product that I manage is Cold Fusion. So it's a threat model for Cold Fusion that I did. And it is essentially, you know, the double circle, this one is, this is like uh, total internal communication uh, area, right? There is uh, nothing that is going outside the boundary, right? And then uh, the dotted lines are your uh, uh, sandbox layers, right? So you can see there's a flash player commu inbound communication uh, happening. There's a web browser. There is a bunch of other uh, remote uh, data source connectivity stuff. I mean, what I'm saying is uh, this is very, very, uh, this, this was, uh, something that 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 you know, uh, if you talk to a senior person on the team or a product architecture, they are very easily able to do that. You ask them to do a whiteboard diagram of uh, you know to draw an architecture diagram of the feature that you are doing, then they will easily do that. You have to just capture the same thing in your uh, threat model. So that's the story on threat model. And then obviously you uh, uh, get into the implementation uh, phase. Uh, where uh, you need to uh, uh, start uh, implementing some of the uh, uh, areas that you have identified to improve uh, the security on your product. Uh, the next one is uh, uh, testing, and uh, testing can be both ways. It can be based on uh, uh, the next version that you are building, or it can be more proactive testing, uh, uh, where you say these are the areas that I need to identify, uh, uh, and there are a lot of mechanisms uh, that you can use for uh, 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 secure testing. 
but I'm, I'm uh, generally talking about the phases where the central security team was interacting with the product team uh, to come up with you know what are the various steps uh, in the product life cycle, secure product life cycle that you need to do. And then obviously uh, before you ship, there is a security. Sorry. Yes. Uh, first, first testing is uh, uh, when you uh, use uh, uh, random uh, uh, inputs to attack. Uh, uh, someone can explain me uh, b much better than me on first testing. Please feel uh, free to do so. Yes, it's, it's mostly like that, but it's it's like you have each file first, and there are a lot of uh, stuff where you actually uh, create random uh, uh, inputs and then uh, attack. It's it's not. It's not like uh, uh, it's it's slightly different from other forms, but it's more like uh, a random set of uh, data that is being used. Um, uh, readiness. Uh, so we do a ship readiness review uh, before we uh, ship a product, and uh, it's a security readiness review that is run by the security team. So you can't escape, right? So you need to uh, uh, make sure that you know there is a readiness review that is already done. So some of the suggestions that they have provided uh, during the SPLC cycle are uh, uh, taken care of. And I think again I will go back to the response plan. Uh, again, very important. Uh, you discuss uh, that you know what is going to be the response uh, uh, plan on various features. You know, if there is a security uh, vulnerability that is reported. How you are going to respond to that? And what are the uh, uh, documentation, security white papers, and other stuff uh, uh, that you are uh, uh, going to uh, use? And uh, the final uh, phase is uh, response, which is post ship. Uh, what is uh, how are you shipping patches, and what is the update management plan? So these are uh, uh, the seven stages of SPLC, and uh, so these are, you know, more at a, pro a recommended level to all product teams. And let's uh, dive uh, uh, into uh, what is the strategy that we adopted for uh, uh, for the product, uh, and what did we really do? So these are the uh, team level uh, strategy uh, that we adopted to improve security of the product. So I call it a three prong strategy. Uh, the the, uh, the first one is the product enhancements uh, that we did around security. Uh, the process improvements uh, 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 that we did uh, uh, around security and the third is uh, delivery and notification mechanism and uh, to be honest uh, for the product uh, that we were looking into uh, very very bad uh, the delivery and notification mechanism and uh, that actually helped us solve a lot of problems uh, made our customers happy uh, and uh, what we also did was uh, on orthogonal access uh, uh, we dis decided that we will have some short term goals and some long term goals because you can't do everything uh, in short term, you can't do everything uh, in a long term, right? And uh, I think uh, 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 the previous presenter, Ketan, I think Ketan Vyas was describing, you know, there is an, uh, uh, money involved here, right? You have, I have to decide, you know, how much, uh, how much investment I'm ready to uh, uh, make, right? So obviously I'll say, okay, these are the immediate targets, short term. Uh, and obviously, this uh, you work out uh, along with uh, input from security team also because there is a triaging process that is also involved. You know what is uh, important right now versus what is going to be important a little bit later on. So, uh, uh, so we decided both short-term, long-term plans and uh, the same. So I'm going to uh, uh, take the short-term and long-term. I'll probably sporadically mention about them, but. Uh, let's focus on uh, 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 these three uh, uh, strategies uh, that we adopted. Uh, any questions so far? Uh, Can you talk about product enhancements? What kind of strategy are you looking at for product enhancements? Sure. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, cover in the next uh, uh, slide. I'll take up that question. But uh, 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 essentially, uh, and I'm coming from, uh, it's not a project, right? I'm, I'm coming from a product background. So we continue to deliver versions of product, right? Version 8, version 9. So if I am, I bet if I started working on my strategy on product enhancement in version 8, I'm saying that what are the security features that I'm going to build in a version 9? So those are uh, product enhancements. So you are looking at every step of security which was going to be undertaken in the next version? Yes, that's right, that's right. And uh, some of it you can do right now. Like if you are shipping an updater or a service pack, you say that's for part of my short-term goal. So the product enhancement short-term goal 
is fix these five set of bugs and provide one enhancement, right? But long-term goal is maybe I need to change my architecture, right? I need to change the design of the product, so I need to invest more. So those are the so I'm trying to uh, separate out uh, product-related stuff from process-related stuff and uh, the delivery and no notification so that you know, it becomes very easy uh, to focus on uh, each one of them and then uh, decide how to go about it. Uh, any, any other question? All right. So uh, product enhancements, uh, 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 to be very precise and specific, uh, these are some of the short-term uh, uh, examples. Uh, what can be uh, short-term uh, uh, product enhancements versus uh, what could be long-term uh, uh, product enhancements. For example, improve encryption, some low-hanging fruit, right? Uh, maybe you are using uh, low bits for encryption, you change to high bits, you know. Uh, you can always figure out some low-hanging fruit. Uh, you can make some uh, improvement around cookie session handling, uh, some, some amount of uh, cross-site scripting, CSRF. Uh, critical security bug fix uh, uh, that are reported. So installer signing, uh, and this is very, very important. Uh, that was very easy to do also, that we have security checklist for every feature that we <coughs> sign off. Doesn't matter what, what is the size of the uh, feature. So uh, because when we say this product is ready to, uh, this feature is ready to be shipped, obviously you work on multiple features. Right? So at different stages, different features are available uh, in uh, uh, ready to be shipped, right? So they have to go through security uh, checklist. Uh, otherwise, they, they cannot be signed off. You know, the developers and QE working on that feature, uh, they cannot move on to their next feature unless it is uh, uh, signed off. And we designed a security uh, 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 checklist uh, to make sure that, you know, the, those are implementable guidelines or if there is work that is required to be done later on, there is some amount of tracking that is uh, going to happen. And also we established a code review process. Sometimes it's very uh, uh, difficult also, but uh, we try to uh, uh, make sure that uh, uh, the, some of the code review process actually uh, happen. In, uh, in the process improvement, I'll tell you how we actually made the code review process uh, work also. I'll quickly talk about that. Uh, Long-term examples, uh, secure by default configuration. You know, we want to uh, uh, create a version that is can be installed by secure, so all secure security uh, flags are turn, turned on. Uh, stronger encryption, architectural changes, uh, uh, because of which you cannot, you have been always punting, right? Okay, I can't do this in this series because I need to uh, change the design or I need to change the architecture. So uh, those are uh, some of the decisions that can uh, go in long term. And also, long term you can actually uh, uh, decide uh, what you do about all the security bugs that have been reported, independent of their priorities and uh, uh, other things, but at least have a plan uh, to address those or to say we'll never address those, but no uh, uh, in-between situation. Uh, the second one, uh, our team process improvement, so we actually did uh, quite a bit. Uh, it was tough, uh, uh, it wasn't uh, easy. Uh, we have to actually uh, uh, go through this over a period of uh, time, uh, uh, hackle people nicely, politely, uh, 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 just to make sure that uh, we are on track on uh, uh, these items. But this is where we get uh, a lot of benefit uh, from and overall sense of awareness. And again, uh, you can uh, decide the process improvements as a short-term objective or long-term objective. So uh, let's look at the team setup, uh, training and certification, testing process, development process, security review, documentation, communication. And uh, I want to emphasize again that we are actually uh, doing uh, all of this right now. So it's not something uh, that's coming out of blue, it's something that we are trying to adopt to, and uh, this is giving us uh, 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 positive results. Obviously, scope for improvement, uh, but uh, not a bad start. So uh, the most important decision that we took uh, in terms of team setup, we have a dedicated security czar. Uh, in fact, uh, she uh, uh, the dedicated security czar on our product. She's actually here as well. So we said, like, it's not a part-time responsibility. On our uh, product, security is not a part-time responsibility. It's a full-time responsibility. And because we follow a cyclone process, we have to have a security czar with a security QE. That's it. Uh, 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 and uh, you know, it was a tough decision because uh, I had to give away some features uh, in favor of improving security, but that was that was a choice, you know, that I think uh, very, very happy with uh, that choice, uh, uh, I can tell you today. 
uh, and instead of uh, trying to hire someone and stuff like that, we actually asked one of our, uh, I mean, she in this case, and she 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 uh, said, okay, I will take up that uh, responsibility. And we're very good because she knows now the product as well as the security aspect. So it, it is working very beautifully for us. Uh, and uh, I realized part time does not work. You know, if you're serious about security, you've got to have a security person on the team, period. Uh, uh, that's how it works. And then uh, we also define process for reviewing security issues. Earlier, because there was no dedicated person, we have to like uh, go go to people who are actually uh, uh, experts in their areas and then talk to them. And it was like it was all lost somewhere. But having dedicated person itself allowed us to uh, have better processes in place. So uh, we were able to create some process for reviewing security issues. And I was talking about the security checklist and other things and the code review process. We were actually able to achieve that because we have some someone to actually dedicatedly uh, uh, look at those kind of uh, things. Uh, the second thing that we did was uh, training. Um, our central security team designed uh, 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 four uh, uh, certification level, uh, four security belts. They, they, they have named it with colors, I think white, green, brown, black. A uh, lot of fun there with the colors, uh, but uh, uh, let's let's call it level one to level four. And 100% of the team, including managers, have to clear level one security build, and they have to do it every year. Okay, it's not like I have uh, once done, I have forgotten about it. And it's really easy, simple. I mean, with technology, uh, you can easily create an online presentation with quizzes, right? It's not no big deal. Uh, you create that, and uh, everyone has to pass easy. So it's not like you know we are expecting managers or QEs or developers to uh, become you know security geeks. It's all about awareness, right? Uh, and uh, it's it's all about awareness. And the second thing is to have all the architects to have level two security belt and at least one level three and level four belt within the team. And obviously the degree of difficulty in attaining those belt uh, uh, increases with the level. So. Overall, uh, good knowledge and uh, uh, good uh, uh, appreciation on security awareness and security within the team. Uh, the the next one uh, on team process improvements was the testing process. Uh, earlier on, we had very uh, random ad hoc process uh, to test, but now we have a full infrastructure set to test uh, security. Uh, so we have uh, uh, stuff like Veracode, apps, scan, uh, uh, fuzzing, and uh, a lot of uh, uh, other things. So we have a dedicated, because we have a dedicated security queue, right? So we have a dedicated uh, testing process uh, for uh, security. We don't have to look outside uh, or uh, to anyone else, uh, really. A lot of changes in the development uh, process. Uh, uh, we started reviewing all reported security issues and said there will be no backlog on security issues. Uh, uh, because we include a lot of third party libraries, so we said we will have some minimum standard policy. There's still a tricky area for us, uh, not 100% sorted out, because uh, we cannot uh, really uh, uh, command, demand uh, a lot of things from third party libraries, but we need to uh, figure that out. Uh, we also started going on a regular bug fix schedule, uh, uh, so that you know there is a predictable improvement uh, uh, in the security, and then uh, security bug markers, prioritization, and uh, uh, all those uh, triaging the process. And uh, security is part of a feature sign of checklist. Very very important item. Uh, any questions so far uh, uh, before we look at other team process improvements? From where all you get the inputs from the security team? From the central security team because uh, ours is a web application, uh, uh, it's an application server product, right? So there are certain uh, uh, standards, guidelines that are available. Uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, any code that you write in certain area, we know it is vulnerable to cross-site scripting. So uh, like code review process has to check those things. So that becomes part of uh, checklist. Like uh, if certain, it's a new area like uh, if you are, let's say we, we are trying to implement WebSocket, uh, you know, it's a new protocol. So if you are doing a protocol, you need to get it reviewed by somebody, right, who will actually look at your uh, specification and tells you, okay, what is that you need to really look after and 
How do you handle issues around that? Yes. How do you benchmark that checklist? How do you benchmark that checklist? So you, you should be sure whether you, whether you are covering all the aspects. Right. So uh, I think it works uh, three ways uh, in terms of benchmarking. So obviously, uh, there is no other checklist that is available at our disposal to really benchmark it against. So, yes, I am coming to that. So, uh, so that's why I said that there are three ways we do it. The first one is the central security team. And I, I told you that these, these are a bunch of security experts. So they will provide us input and criteria. So I'm assuming they'll take uh, into consideration all those uh, uh, things when saying that these are the things that you need to uh, uh, look at. Uh, the second thing is our own understanding, because coming from a development background, I know at what stage people do make mistakes. right? I know uh, when people have the tendency to check in code uh, without really bothering about how is it going to impact. So those areas I can cover saying that, no, 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 at this point in time, you need to uh, get it uh, reviewed and all, uh, that kind of stuff. Right? And with security design, it becomes very easy to get the uh, review process done. Right? So those are the areas that I can provide to the team. Engineering development team itself can provide, like, these are the areas we need to have some uh, uh, checks done. And the third is the testing. Right? And I explained to you, we were never following uh, testing processes. So the checklist says that, have you run all these uh, uh, tests? before you are signing off the feature. And the fourth that we use is when we don't know whether our checklist is covering this, we have to get a security review done. And we'll ask our central security team, either you do it, or we want to get it done from a third party. So it's a still uh, an evolving process for us. Uh, uh, I said scope for improvement, so uh, it'll be interesting to know uh, your thoughts and ideas. Uh, it's, I think asked in story. It's been a wonderful presentation. The one question which is bugging me is always there is a trade-off between the performance of the application and the security of the application. Okay. How do you, you know balance it? When it comes to the performance and the functionalities, okay, vis-a-vis -vis the security, how many security features you need to build in, how many you need not building, who takes the call? Uh, I take the call. <laughs> no, I mean as an engineering uh, 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 head for this pro product, I have to take that call, and uh, uh, we are not really faced those challenges, to be honest, uh, in this uh, 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 product because uh, we have not seen performance clashing with security. The only place where it kind of clashed a little bit where we where we are trying to do uh, secure by default configuration because if we provide secure by default configuration, then the performance is uh, uh, slow. But luckily, uh, we have all those as customizable options in the uh, UI interface, so people can turn them off. We are saying, uh, during install time, we are saying that you install in default mode or secure mode. So there's a choice that we are providing you. And if you install in secure mode, later on you can turn off certain flags that you feel impact the uh, performance of the application. I think uh, to answer your question, I think you have to give choice to the users, make those customizable, saying that you decide, I cannot decide for you because I want to provide security options, but if you feel they are coming in way of performance, uh, you decide or may you handle them. Uh, I, I don't have an exact answer to that question. I was interested in learning about the training that you give to your, you know, your people. Sure. There are four levels, and so it's a self-paced learning, but it's an instructor-based training. You know, and do you have in-house uh, product that you use, or you you know use some industry standard products? Just right. Give it. So our centralized security team has created uh, 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 in-house training, and it is uh, I think level one and level two is online self-learning exercise. There is no instructor uh, required. And uh, you go through course material, you have to answer the quiz. If you uh, answer all questions correctly, you pass. And this has to be done every year, so you have to do a refresher course. So it's not like you forget about uh, and uh, uh, done with that. Uh, so they have uh, designed this uh, course. I don't know uh, uh, what inputs uh, did they use, but it's uh, self. You can uh, do it yourself. I think level 3 and 4, and I was discussing with uh, Shilpi this afternoon uh, during lunchtime. Level 3 is project based, so you have to actually do a project and then submit it to the security team for analysis. Yes, yes. So that uh, I found it very interesting concept that you have to actually take up a, a project. And obviously, uh, 
uh, this is not required for everyone, but uh, this is really required for security czar and stuff like that. You know, uh, you really want to make sure that the people who are uh, dealing with security issues day to day are actually have gone through these uh, training. So obviously, severity uh, uh, increases. Like level two training will not talk about what is XSS, right? But level one training will tell you okay what is cross site scripting and what are the disadvantages and yeah, I mean those kind of stuff. So that it's it's more like an awareness thing. So uh, that's how it is. So how do you ensure that people actually do that training? You know, I've seen. Uh, no, because it's an online. So there's a report. So you can uh, you can actually see uh, what is the percentage uh, uh, that is achieved. It gives you detail uh, and it gives you names also. <laughs> so it gives you names of the people who have not done that, and it gives you name of the people who have uh, to do a refresh. It sends a reminder also. It's easy, right? It's an online self-paced, uh, mm -hmm. right? And. Uh, uh, and you are, and uh, if you look at it, I was talking about uh, 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 grading. You're not going to get good grades, right? If uh, the t statistics is showing only 60% of the team has done. So as a manager, if I'm uh, <laughs> like, the security team will say, sorry, grade D. And, you know, my target was me, 60%, <laughs> how can I give you? I'll get it done. <laughs> so that's the reason I was saying that the grades do become very objective, you know, like, it can really drive you. It's very easy to know, okay. And team does understand. You know, if you tell the team that, you know, we are at F, you know, like that does not make sense. And uh, and they will actually uh, uh, help you uh, uh, achieving that. Yeah, so I have a question. Sure. Uh, going back to whatever you had said earlier, uh, when you do threat modeling, uh, you sit along with the client or you brainstorm and you decide what minimum security baseline. But as you said that when uh, the product is there, the, the it's the onus of the user who would select it uh, if you want something, uh, I mean, if you want this type of security or a lower type of security. So would the user be, I mean, that smart, who, uh, I mean, that it can, you know, uh, take a call on, okay, I want this security feature, I don't want this security feature. Because all these things, if I'm not wrong, all these things are to be taken while doing threat modeling. Correct. Okay. You decide. No, absolutely, very good question. and. Uh, uh, I will cover that sub part of it later on also, but if you look at this uh, threat model, uh, uh, you can't uh, uh, see this uh, with circle, even I can't see it. Okay. <laughs> this one, right? So it's it's a remote data connectivity uh, 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 protocol, and that is outside the sandbox. So you can see uh, there's an incoming, right, or bi-directional also. So what we do is we provide an option saying that we want to keep this communication channel on or off, right? So you decide, right? There is a potential of something uh, uh, coming in here. I'm just giving you an example, right? So you can d determine, uh, uh, you know, what are uh, all the uh, uh, vulnerability holes that can exist during threat modeling. And you cannot uncover all, but at a very high architectural level, you can actually uh, uh, cover uh, if you build this and uh, use a data flow diagram. So. Uh, so th that's that's the these are the choices that you have to give, and some are very feature specific. You can actually drill down into those features and say that okay, there are like five choices here uh, 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 which can easily provide. But you have to uh, you have to really analyze what is the uh, project that you are building and uh, 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 what is your analysis and uh, uh, and does it make sense to provide that choice uh, to the user? Cost benefit analysis. Yes, yes, and also. Uh, I think it's better to, and we have realized time and time again, uh, uh, work, I mean, I have realized time and time again working on this product, it is always better to tell users what is happening rather than not tell them and give them something. You know, even if you make it secure by default, if you don't tell them, there is no benefit. Like, please don't do that. Uh, you have to tell them, like, there is something that we are building for you. Maybe you don't give them a choice, that's okay, but tell them. <laughs> If you give them a choice, uh, that's also good. But uh, that communication uh, uh, is uh, very important. And uh, the other part, I will answer you, uh, one of the uh, process improvement that we did was around the hardening guide. So we published a security hardening guide that actually lists out all the possible parameters uh, that are there. So it is for system administrators saying that take the security hardening guide, have that. Right? You can go through all the parameters that are available from security perspective. Uh, we are also writing down what what they do, what they impact. Uh, uh, use them as you wish. So, sure. oh, five minutes, okay. 
so I spoke about this. Uh, so we also do a security audit uh, as part of the uh, improvement. Uh, and this is just an example of what is the response sometimes that you can get from uh, uh, the auditors. They can rate uh, file issues and rate uh, on to access on severity and on probability of occurrence of an issue. There are multiple ways in which they can do that. Uh, this is an example. I think Albert was talking about when you triage, you can use the potential, future potential. I like that concept. So, uh, that is also something interesting. Uh, documentation, this is where uh, I was talking about the new features and security settings should be documented. There should be a separate hardening guide, like security hardening guide. Like if I want to make it like bulletproof, use every possible security setting, I have a guide. Just focused on that. And then white paper is mostly about if you get a third party review done, uh, do you want to publish those results? Uh, and not in a negative way, but because you have fixed those issues, so you want to tell the entire world, right? We got a review done, we fixed all the issues that were reported, and we are good to go, and the third party has certified us. Right? It's, it's a good marketing thing. Right? I would do that. Uh, uh, communication, again highlighting. Uh, uh, so uh, we started creating new mailing lists. There is a wiki that keeps all the security bugs, uh, white paper, uh, uh, and uh, 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 Shilpi maintains uh, uh, a security blog. So that's what I was talking about. You know, from developer from the team from security czar from the product team there is a security blog you know there's an evangelism activity happening around uh, security and response to security issues uh, uh, is key uh, the third uh, uh, step that we took at the team level was uh, delivery and notification uh, we were pathetic we were F. Uh, <laughs> so uh, so we have built uh, an automatic patch notification system with criticality markers uh, there is a regular patch schedule so we do a quarterly update and stuff like that. There's a smooth install process, right? If you have to follow like 15 odd instructions, yeah, no one is going to apply a patch very quickly, right? But if it is a single flight, or if it happens uh, 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 on its own, I think uh, it, it makes it uh, easier. And also all supported version, because if you're supporting, you've got to support. So uh, in summary, uh, security is increasingly becoming a, a key differentiator. Um, and hence, uh, there is a need to be proactive. Uh, define assessment criteria. It becomes very objective. You know, uh, categorize and uh, give grades, uh, and set up a security process. I know a lot of security people. Uh, uh, there's, you know, I, 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 uh, especially attending this conference, I've realized, and I was talking to uh, Ashilpi this morning also. Like, there are silos that are uh, some sometimes exist between the security <laughs> community and development community, and there there is not so much uh, information that actually uh, uh, flows uh, uh, between the two domain, and sometimes that prevents because developers are the one who actually build the features in the product, and and the security job is looked as an outside world thing, and in security domain, if you know like the hardcore things uh, uh, being discussed, and what developers need are really simple, <laughs> easy stuff that they know they can change when they are checking in their code, to be honest, right? So there has to be some sort of uh, uh, matching that needs to happen. So set up some security process that can uh, match uh, the uh, two sides of it and have a response plan, very important. If, if you are making improvements uh, in your product and if those are not conveyed to your customers and if those that do not help uh, to improve the perception on security of your product, there is no point in investing in security. So that response is very, very important. All right, if, uh, if uh, there are any questions, I can be reached on uh, uh, my office, uh, Adobe mail ID. Uh, if there are any questions, uh, I think we've got probably time for a couple questions. Uh, all right, thank you.